Hi everybody and welcome back to my uh, modeling channel. On this uh, part 2 episode of uh, this uh, 747 from Iron Maiden build, we're gonna finish basically building the entire model. So uh, currently I'm uh, sanding down uh, the doors as uh, the problem I had on the doors and the, the cargo doors, they were a little bit too thick and too deep so I had to uh, fill all those gaps and sand them down. After that, I have to uh, protect and I have to uh, put the clear part to the left side of the fuselage and I will so do some protection because I would like to avoid uh, to scratch them when I will do some uh, sanding on the aircraft itself. I will now repeat the same operation on the wing and uh, basically the left wing and the left uh, horizontal stabilizer as I will have to add uh, those uh, clear parts as well around them as uh, we would like to see the structures uh, of the wings and the uh, stabilizer. So now let's build uh, the main wing, actually this is the right wing of the aircraft, just adding some glue and uh, letting them dry and of course once uh, the wings or the stabs are dried out I will have to add some uh, putty and uh, to fill all the gaps and of course sanding them down again. So we are now going to do some uh, more detailing on that aircraft and actually I will do the uh, APU intake. So it was basically a little uh, square going out of the plastic and that's what I had on the kit so it was absolutely not detailed and it was quite ugly. So I decided to pay a little bit more attention and a little bit more time on that. So for this basically I drill uh, a hole uh, at the place uh, where we have the uh, APU uh, intake. And of course, uh, after drilling, uh, I try to uh, square that shape with uh, some uh, scalpel blades. And uh, after that, what I did, I used uh, some more pictures and uh, could get to a, a little bit better result. So for that, once I had the pictures, I could take some uh, visual uh, sight on the kit. And I used some masking tape, basically, to have the proper shape of the uh, APU intake.
So when I got the hole at the proper uh, shape, I used some plastic card basically that I tried to cut at the proper dimension and uh, using some uh, pictures from the internet I could uh, arrive and uh, get the proper uh, shape I wanted. So basically you have to go from the back side and uh, come back and uh, a little bit of uh, twiggling and uh, fiddling and then uh, everything went uh, correctly and I had uh, the proper APU uh, intake for the 747. After that of course I had to add some uh, more sanding and uh, filling up some more gaps once again as uh, this was a constant uh, work on that model. It was then time to uh, start the uh, engine assembly. So for this, uh, what we had is I decided not to use the clear part and get the details of the engines uh, on that 7.4. So I just uh, glued them uh, straight ahead and then of course had uh, to fill the gaps. And once the gaps were filled, uh, we finally uh, paint them in the white color. getting close to uh, finish that uh, cockpit and that cabin so I used uh, some uh, epoxy uh, putty and uh, it was a two composite uh, place and what I'm doing now I'm preparing basically based on the, the doors that I have I will prepare the slides on each door so I will have to do that for the uh, right side that we will barely be able to see but I still won't like to have uh, those details in case uh, we, we are able to manage to see them uh, from uh, the other side. So now you can see the details of uh, those doors. So I will use uh, a paintbrush and some uh, standard uh, white Tamiya. After that, I will use uh, some uh, white glue and add basically the, uh, the print of uh, the emergency exit logo and the doors. Those are uh, pretty, away, pretty far away from those clear parts, so we will be able to see them. So after that, one of the challenges, uh, as I had all the windows open, I had to basically paint the fuselage in white and then I had to do some uh, other masking tapes on the outside as well, but you will see that a little bit later and then I will put a clear coat of a white color on that. As uh, the window will be open, I will have to close those when I will do the main paint to avoid to have some paint coming inside uh, the cabin of the aircraft.
So this is a big moment. We are almost halfway to our uh, build. So we're gonna close. So now I'm basically adding some weight on the, the front part of uh, that 747 as uh, I would like to avoid the plane to sit on its tail. So we have to do uh, that ballast on a regular basis on most of the model I built. You must have seen that before. So uh, that's the big challenge. And then uh, of course we check if the balance is uh, sufficient. And now we are going to close uh, and uh, close both of half fuselage and with the, with the interior uh, side. Once the glue was dried, it was time to uh, add some uh, epoxy putty. I decided to try that this time. And uh, basically I uh, fill up all the gaps between those two half of fuselage and uh, to have a pretty uh, smooth area. Of course, uh, after doing that, uh, there will be some uh, sanding work, uh, sanding down everything once again. So as I was mentioning earlier, now I'm protecting basically those windows and uh, I will uh, put those masking tapes to avoid having uh, some paint entering the cabin while I will do uh, the white coat on the fuselage later on. So I decided to add also some uh, nav light to that model and of course you can see that uh, there was nothing uh, done for that uh, on that kit. So basically I uh, cut the shape of the landing light uh, on that uh, part. So I use a clear sprue as well as you can see and I cut it at the proper dimension and uh, after that I had to uh, separate it in uh, some other parts and I glue it and uh, let it dry. Once uh, the glue was uh, cured and dried, I decided to uh, then uh, I had to uh, prepare my knife light to be at the proper shape. So I used a file to do the, uh, the basic shaping, basically. And uh, when I got to the proper side, then I started to use some sandpaper to get uh, a, a little bit uh, better result. And after that, to uh, finish it, I used some uh, sandpaper at uh, a 1000 grade. Uh, to send it down to get a pretty smooth result and uh, to finish it to have a really clear part I use some Tamiya compound to uh, get uh, a pretty good result actually. After that I decided to do some more detail on the, the APU exhaust so what I did is I used some uh, modeling paste to uh, draw basically uh, on paper and uh, then I could have the proper shape of uh, that little uh, part, that extra part, that appendix on the, on the back side of the, of the APU uh, exhaust. So I cut it to the correct dimension of course and uh, as you can see on my 747 for uh, SP I also did uh, similar things but I learned from that and I did a better work uh, I would say on this one. 
So we always learn from our previous experience. So once I had this part uh, solved, I had some other one. But you can see a lot of uh, detailed pictures on the internet that will help you to, uh, to have the correct uh, shape and also uh, the correct uh, appendix on the, on the APU exhaust. Of course, after that, there is the uh, exhaust itself. Uh, that's a cylinder and there is a protection below it. And of course, uh, that was really not at the proper shape. So what I did, I had to do a little bit of fiddling and adjustment. And at the end, the result was uh, pretty decent and I was uh, very happy of uh, what I could get. After finishing our APU, uh, it was time to uh, add the, the horizontal stabilizer and the wings uh, to the aircraft. Of course, uh, after that there would be some more uh, gap filling, of course. And uh, then I decided to go and uh, prepare the, the fan of the aircraft. So that part was a little bit tricky again because I saw the fan disc, they, were, they didn't have enough blade. So uh, I decided to go and basically uh, add some more flan blade between those uh, the one available. So initially what I had, I had to uh, go on the back of those fan blades and uh, reduce them at the proper shape uh, basically. And then I had some, add some plastic cards and I managed to uh, basically add in between those blades another blade and uh, that was able to give me a proper uh, result toward the end. So you can see on the bottom right, the first two fans were completed. While uh, the Corregar uh, coating is uh, drying out, it's time to add some details to uh, our uh, nose gear. So for that, the scissor was not at a proper shape. I didn't like it very much, so I decided to uh, remake one myself. And uh, there was also um, the side bars on the, the nose strut were not also correct. So I decided to uh, basically cut them out and use some uh, plastic lines and uh, redo it the, the way I wanted. So uh, I cut uh, everything down, sand it down and get the proper uh, line, the proper diameter and then uh, I was able to uh, do it at the uh, correct shape. Then uh, you will see that with a little bit of patience you can get uh, a pretty decent uh, result and of course that more reality to our kit. So once uh, this was uh, completed, I used some uh, regular uh, plastic cards and uh, I prepare basically the, the scissor on the nose strut. So uh, I use a regular 0.3 millimeter plastic card and uh, I cut it at the correct uh, angle and the proper shape. Then I use some driller, as you can see on the, on the regular picture you can find on the internet that uh, you need, they have, they have holes on those scissors normally to save weight and uh, get it together and uh, glue them together and uh, that allows you to get uh, a pretty decent result. on the taxi light for that I use some epoxy putty and I printed basically the the taxi lights on the gear after that when it was dry I had to shape it at the correct uh, size basically and the correct shape as you can see there is some uh, angles and of course I was able to glue it at the end uh, on the nose strut after that I had to drill the two uh, on the both side the two lights basically 
Uh, also had to add, as you can see, uh, some uh, plastic lines and those are basically the hydraulic line or the steering. The... Those are the actuator for the nose wheel steering that uh, I'm going to have to glue also on the, on the key. While the grey paint is uh, drying on the, the wings of our aircraft, we are now going to uh, finish up our landing gear. So I used some uh, chrome uh, color as well for the strut and uh, the audio part and to add some more details. After that, uh, what I normally do, I use uh, some lead wire and I will uh, replicate normally the hydraulic lines and some other uh, lines on the aircraft, on the, on the gear basically. So I had also to add some uh, black paint for uh, some placards that are on the, uh, on the actual uh, nose gear. So after that, you will see me using some uh, basically crystal clear parts and that will be for the, for the, the taxi lights. So now you can see that I'm using those lead wires and normally that's work very well as they are very soft and you can mold them to any type of shape you desire. finish the clear part now we're gonna put the white coat uh, on that uh, fuselage and uh, to be ready for the final part so now uh, once the paint has been dried out we're gonna remove all the masking tape and uh, see uh, how it done then uh, we're gonna add uh, the undercarriage and of course once again I had to do some uh, adjustment to get the proper result but uh, obviously at the end I, mean, I was quite satisfied with the, the end so uh, now the, the plane is sitting uh, on his legs and uh, we're gonna be able to finish to uh, glue the uh, engines on them. And uh, after that, of course, I will have to add uh, the uh, engine, the pipe, the exhaust pipe, basically of course, the jet engine. And we're gonna do some uh, finishing tips and basically the APU exhaust finally is gonna come up, of course. And uh, we'll do after that uh, some other uh, mechanic. So I had to cut those decals and I had uh, to check them out as uh, you can see it's a little bit uh, I didn't want it to put the whole decal on the clear part so this I have to say that those decals were a little bit thick have been used with a better quality decal from Ravel uh, they were not soft at all and uh, that was quite difficult mainly for the, the big uh, the, the big logo on the tail uh, this one was a, a pretty hard path to, to work with. I was quite lucky I had enough uh, softening uh, solution for those decals. That really helped me, otherwise they, they could have break uh, quite easily. But on the average, uh, I have to say that I was still uh, workable.
So this is the final result. Our 747-400 Head Force One has been finally finished. I hope you enjoyed that build with me. This was an incredible build I did. I think this was my masterpiece so far. Spent a lot of time, but I think it really was the time spent. So. The kit from Dragon is a pretty good kit, but uh, you can add a lot more details and a few things are not in really good shape, but with a little bit of work, you can get a pretty good result. So I hope you enjoyed that video with me. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel if it's not done yet. And I will uh, see you soon for another uh, modeling video. Thank you for watching and see you on my next build.